Jacob Edwin Garn holds the distinction of being both the father of Utah Senator and astronaut Jake Garn, and in a real sense, the father of aviation in Utah. A native of Salt Lake City and a graduate of the University of Utah, Ed Garn was the first person in Utah ever to receive a pilot's license, only 14 years after the Wright brothers first took to the skies. My father was probably the pioneer of Utah aviation. Really unusual in those days, he was a pilot in World War I. Got his wings in 1917, 14 years after the Wright brothers flew, he was a military pilot. Garn began his flying career as a pilot with the Army's aviation section, the U.S. Signal Corps, during World War I. He trained in California by flying Curtis Jennies and was so talented that he was kept on as an instructor following his training. But what he really wanted was to fly and fight in Europe. He was based in uh, California, and uh, he was going to be sent to uh, Europe. And uh, the war ended about three weeks before his orders to go overseas. He so loved our country and was so proud that he was uh, a military pilot in World War I. So while he was happy the war ended, from a personal standpoint, he wanted to be more involved and serve his country. Following the war, Ed Garn began a career as a civil engineer, building roads for the State Highway Department. That skill, combined with his background as a pilot, led to the next phase of his career. The Bureau of Air Commerce, the predecessor to the Civil Aeronautics Authority and FAA, appointed Garn as a regional director, supervising airport construction in six western states. Later, due to his success at the national level, Utah's governor recruited him to head the Utah Division of Aeronautics. Where in 1937 do you find a civil engineer who's also a pilot? That combination just didn't, didn't exist. So he was the perfect choice for Utah's first director of aeronautics. He had worked for the uh, road department for over 20 years and they created the Utah State Aeronautics Division, and so he became Utah's first director of aeronautics in 1937. As the first director of the Utah Division of Aeronautics, Garn created and oversaw the development of most major airports in the state, including the selection of the site for Hill Air Force Base. When World War II hit, Garn wanted to return to the military, but was deemed too old. Nevertheless, he joined the war effort by working at the Remington Arms plant in Salt Lake City and continuing as an engineering consultant. When his young son Jake was ready, the senior Garn taught him to fly, launching another remarkable career in aviation. He had a very unique wife because where do you find back in those days, in the 30s, that my mother let him buy an airplane before they bought their first house? <laughs> His, uh, the airplane that I remember he taught me how to fly in was a 1934 Fairchild 24. Single engine fabric tail dragger. And all my life I will still remember flying that airplane with daddy. Reflecting on his life shortly before he died, Garn commented prophetically, I have seen aviation come a long way in the last 50 years. From the old jennies that I flew to the pure jets of today, and when I leave here in a few years, and if by the remotest possibility I should go to that place where they say you sprout wings, I can visualize myself flying around to observe the advances made in airplanes in the next 50 years. And who knows, maybe one of my posterity will fly in space someday. Jacob Edwin Garn is remembered today as a trailblazer in Utah aviation. In an era of primitive airstrips and the donning of general aviation, Garn helped lay the foundation for generations of pilots in Utah and beyond. But perhaps his biggest contribution was in teaching his young son to reach for the skies, fulfilling his dreams of traveling to space.